Welcome to the Great Girlfriends Podcast, where we discuss life, love, laughter, and everything in between. I'm your host, Sibla Muti. And don't you just love how I brought in our studio audience today? <laughs> Those are my friends and family, y'all. They're here to clap it up and celebrate this great girlfriend magic that is happening here on the show. So without further ado, grab something great to drink, grab your pen and paper, and get ready for this week's episode. Enjoy. Oh my goodness. Happy, 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 happy day, great girlfriends. I'm so excited to be here with you for another episode of the podcast. Boy, last week, did I have fun talking with Tamika Foster Raymond about her book, Here I Stand, which is a marvelous read for every great girlfriend. If you've ever gone through life, and I, I mean, we're all out here lifing. I'm lifing. I'm going to raise my hand. And if those of you are watching on IG, if you've ever gone through life circumstances that have punched you from the front, back, left, right, side to side, um, and you really want to understand what resilience and overcoming can look like, then this book is for you. So do check out Tamika Foster Raymond's book, Here I Stand. Grab your copy. I grabbed like five copies and I gave them out to my great girlfriends. You never know who needs a good read and uh, just a place of understanding. And I feel like Tamika's book was a real safe space where you could you know, see yourself and say, okay, I don't feel guilty for doing drive-bys. I don't feel guilty for, for what I used to, the way I used to think or what I used to say or my sarcasm, those things. I don't feel guilty for that anymore. So definitely check that book out. Meanwhile, uh, if you haven't joined our Facebook community, I'm inviting you to join our Facebook community. Simply go onto Facebook, go under groups, hit the great girlfriends, and you will be uh, matched with 21,000 women who are waiting to connect with you. They are some of the most dynamic women in the world. They're my great girlfriends. They'll be your new great girlfriends. And you'll have a lot of fun really connecting over very simple life topics and day-to-day things that we all go through. So we're still at the top of the year. It's February. And I feel like it's April already. Like it's going so fast, so fast and furious. And I'm hosting the Power Circle, which is a 90-day accelerator for women who really want to get momentum, have accountability, and grow their net worth through their relationships. It's like a secret sauce of mine. I'm so blessed to be a bridge and a connector to women around the nation and even around the world. And I'm going to share some of those practical strategies with a lot of the great girlfriends that are joining through our accelerator. So if you want to have more information about the accelerator, you can go to thegreatgirlfriends.com or you can email welcome at thegreatgirlfriends.com. And I really, really hope that I can partner with you this year. There are limited spaces. It is not for everyone. It's for women who are serious about momentum. And I'll give you a secret. Motivation is good. Matter of fact, motivation is essential to really getting you uh, in, mo- in motion and helping you to make forward progress. But momentum comes from accountability. It comes from tactical strategies and it comes from a commitment. And you get that when you are doing things in community and you have to be in community with like-minded people. And not everyone in your current community can see, feel, or understand where you want to go or who you desire to become. So it's so important for you to match yourself with people who are in the same frame of mind that you'd like to be in and that you want to continue to sustain. So it's kind of, it's what I call a growth zone. And I offer that to you through the accelerator. If you've listened to this podcast over the years, you already know what I'm about, what the Great Girlfriends community is about, and our mission to really mobilize and deploy, you know, millions of supercharged women around the world who feel ignited and feel empowered to go out, do whatever it is you believe in. All right. Cool. Y'all going to join me? I hope so. (laughs) Okay. So let me take a little sip of my coffee, which is kind of cold now, but it's a good thing I like iced coffee. Because today we're going to talk about clearing the lens. And to me, and for any one of you who has, you know, feels like you have kind of foggy vision. Have you ever, if you wear glasses like I do, then you know when when the lens is foggy, When you can't see clearly and it's blurred, you absolutely cannot make the moves you want to make. So today we're talking about clearing the lens and clearing the lens is an opportunity for us to wipe away all the stuff that kind of maxed our vision and kept us from seeing ourselves as who we really are. Very simple. It could be where you were born. It could be relationships that you were in. It could be the way you see your body. 
It could be your finances. It could be the job that you had. It could be, you know, the company that you've kept for years, or it really could just be a state of mind because sometimes you just get stagnant in life. And I've been there just last week. I hit a slump where, you know, I was riding my roller coaster, feeling real high about life and excited. I was at momentum. And then I just hit a boom brick wall. And I felt very stuck and had to really get myself back up. I needed to clear the lens. So it could be experiences that you've had or circumstances. It could be friendships that are not so friendly anymore. Have you ever had friendships that are not friendly anymore that have kind of gotten stale? Or what I like to say is where two people don't agree on the way that the other should be treated. Maybe it's, you don't agree with the way someone's treating you. <laughs> there are things that are isolating that can keep you from seeing who you really are and knowing what you're truly made of. So when I, again, when I think about clearing the lens, I've been wearing glasses since I was five years old. So I've been wearing glasses longer than I've ever ridden a bike or done any other major life experiences. And so a good 35 plus years of my life, I've been wearing glasses and I'm the type, as soon as I wake up, I'm grabbing for those glasses because I pretty much can't even roll out of bed fully, safely <laughs> without my glasses on. So I'm grabbing those glasses because I need to be able to see so I can be prepared to go out and even go brush my teeth and wash my face, right? So I have to have those, but you know, I have all my contacts today and that's the only way I'd be able to see you guys. But I'm saying that to say when my lens is cloudy, I have no clear view. I don't know where I'm going. I don't know what's ahead of me. I don't know what's to my left or to my right. I can't even imagine you know, the things that I imagined because everything feels foggy. And I also can't actualize because I have no clear view on what's ahead. And so when I wipe my lens, literally and figuratively, it gives me an opportunity to actually see the road ahead. And when I, you, we, we, great girlfriends, we can see the road ahead, we can move around, right? We can go over bumps or we can go around the bumps or we can take a side road. And if you see there's traffic ahead or there's chaos, if there's a wreck, you can get all on an off ramp, right? So there's so much that is uh, more evident when you clear the lens. And I equate clearing the lens literally to having clarity. Clarity, which is like such a, I want to say a buzzword, but it is such a, a word that's been a fixture um, in the empowered woman's mind over the last five, six, 10 years even. People wanting and desiring to have clarity and have a, a full scope of, or visual uh, realization of things that they wanna see. So, all right, back to what I was saying. Much of how you see yourself is reflected in the things that you've been told about yourself. It's so icky to think that people can tell you things about yourself that you actually take as truth versus what's actually true about you, right? But a lot of how we see ourselves is what we've been told on our jobs. You're not good enough on this job, so here's your review. Or you're great at your job, and it's because of what someone has said. Or, you know, you're not built for love based off of something that an ex told you. Or maybe you weren't qualified to be a good spouse or a good husband or a good wife based off of something that someone communicated to you at some point. Or maybe you were told things in your childhood, right? A lot of things that we see about ourselves, the good, the bad, and the in-between. It's reflected in the experiences that you've amassed over the years, and it's reflected in your childhood as well. It's reflected in circumstances. Many times it's reflected in values that we're running from versus values that we're running toward, right? And when you're running from something, it's like your head is turned backwards. You imagine putting my head on a swivel, turning it backwards, right? And you're constantly going, you're going this way, but you're looking that way. So you're, you're going forward, but you're looking backward. How can you go forward looking backwards at the same time? How can you? But so many of us have found ourselves doing that year after year, day after day, moment after moment. Of course, you do want to look in your rearview mirror, but how could you possibly move forward effectively if you're constantly looking back? So today, you know, I want to take this opportunity to go look back and look on the inside and see what we can see and learn what we can learn and know what we need to know and understand so we can uproot things that are not serving our values. Like our toward values are the things that we're working toward, right? So you have those things that you are looking forward to, that you're working toward, that you know will be in your best interest. And those are things that empower you. Those are value, valuable choices that give you progressive realization of a worthy ideal, Right. And you can eliminate the factors that are really, really variables that have been holding you back for so long, right? So I'm saying that to say, we've all been born into a story. 
I was born into a story, great girlfriends, you were born into a story. And we're born in, actually born into someone else's story, someone else's world, someone else's legacy. I am my mother and my father's daughter. You are your, your, your familiar daughter or son or whomever you or have been to your family. And you were born into that story and you inherited that story. You may have been born into a single parent household and you inherited a story that was attached to that household. That doesn't mean that you always have to be void of a male figure in your life that can love you effectively and appropriately or a female, whichever side it was, right? But it does mean that you inherited a story. And along with those stories comes values and comes beliefs and expectations or, you know, letdowns or realities that we use to frame our entire world and the way we see what we want. And imagine what we want to see or how we perceive other people. It's kind of true when you stop and think about it, like, wow, I was born into this story and I believed it because a lot of what I believe about myself is what has been taught to me. And I was groomed to expect a certain thing out of life based off of what I was born into. But now I realize that some of that is not serving where I want to go or who I want to be. And I've got to disrupt those patterns, right? So those things are the things that we really want to get into and disrupt because for 2022, you want to be in a space where you can take full ownership, full possession of your story. And with a clear lens, with clear perspective and fresh, fresh perspective and clarity about who you are and what you're capable of, you can do that. But you can't do it if you're holding on to an inheritance that really doesn't serve where you're going. And when you stop and think about that for a minute, just stop and think about some of the things that you've inherited, you know, even as a woman, as maybe a woman of color, or maybe um, as a woman in a certain city or a certain zip code, you know, certain educational attributes, there are certain things or lack thereof. There are certain things that we inherit and that we take on and that we carry. And we might spend our days running from the truth of, the, of those stories, or we might run toward, but either way, you know, we want to look at our value set and figure out what is meaningful for me in this season. For 2022, what's going to be a meaningful mental state for me? What's going to allow me to think and see myself in the way that I deserve to be seen? How can I be heard in a way that is meaningful for me? How can I amplify what I want heard and disrupt the things that I don't want heard? So I have to eliminate some things and integrate some things, right? And I don't know your full story, so I'm not able to say, girl, you know what you did back in uh, 2012, or girl, remember what happened in fifth grade, or girl, remember the thing your parents said about you, or remember the thing that happened on your job last week, or remember that relationship that was lost in COVID. I don't know those things, but you know them, and you hold on to those. And sometimes we take these possessions and we hold them as truth, and none of them have any real value for where we're going, right? All right. All those things frame the way you live, you see, you move and operate with people that you relate with every single day. When we meet people, when we engage with people, when we impose our beliefs on them, subconsciously we say, I believe X, Y, and Z about you because of the beliefs that I carry. When I meet a new woman, I'm going to impose that belief on her. So we impose our beliefs everywhere we go and we practice our beliefs in the way that we live. It could be good. It could be bad. It could be indifferent. You never know. Right? So... What happens when you impose those beliefs and they don't serve your system? It's time to change up the way that you believe and move and activate. You're like, how do I change my beliefs? Well, you have to ch change the way that you have framed your world. You have to change the way that you allow permissions, change the way that you uh, have structured your value system, right? Some things are worth deconstructing. Other things are worth constructing. Right. So there's a little bit of disruption that we have to move into when we're trying to reframe our world and shift the way we see things. So if you are one of those people that says, I can't trust people, I've never been able to have great girlfriends. Love is hard for me. You know, people in my job don't get raises. Entrepreneurship is not possible for me. This neighborhood is the way it is. You know, you can't trust men, girl. I told you that. See how you treated you. If you're one of those people that says those things at high frequency, I do some soul work. <laughs> you got to reframe those justifications. So the justifications that we place are all reflecting back on the beliefs that we have utilized to kind of safeguard ourselves from failure. Because the last thing we want to feel is that we're never good enough or that we're not loved, 
right? And when we're running against those two feelings, not feeling like we're good enough or not feeling like we're not loved, we reject anything that is going to contradict that because we have to protect ourselves. So saying that to say, you've got beliefs, I've got beliefs. And once upon a time, I had beliefs that were really deserving to the woman that I am and the woman that I've been becoming in the process. And all of us are in the process of becoming, right? And, you know, I used to say, because I came from Memphis, a smaller city, moving to New York was going to be hard for me. This was many moons ago, because I lived in New York for a total of probably 18, 19 years, New York, New Jersey. But when I initially came out and established I was going to New York from Memphis and from New Orleans, I thought it was hard for me because I was a small town girl, right? I thought it was going to be hard to build new relationships, hard to build a new business in a new city. Everything was going to be hard. I said to myself, everything's going to be hard. It's going to be hard. It's just going to be hard. So to me, hard, 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 hard was the language. That was the thing that I was telling myself. That was, that's what I was practicing. That's what I was narrating. That, that's what I was believing. And that's what I was activating. Everything was going to be hard. Even going from an HBCU to an Ivy League school, because I went to Dillard University in New Orleans, Louisiana, and then moved over to Columbia University for a master's degree. Everything was going to be hard. I said, an, going from an Ivy League, from an HBCU, excuse me, to an Ivy League would be hard. Hard, hard, hard. All I practiced was hard. I kind of hear a rap beat. Hard, hard, hard. Everything is hard. Hard, hard, hard. <laughs> it's hard. But that's what I told myself, right? And it, consequently, it made my road hard, hard, hard. Everything was hard, great girlfriends. But let me tell you what, not because everything was actually hard, because my lens was focused on the rough patches. I was so busy looking for the rough patches that I couldn't appreciate smooth roads. Or subconsciously, I would avoid the smooth roads and ride the rough patches because in my mind, I conditioned myself to believe that everything had to be hard, hard, hard. Everything is hard, 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 hard. That's my little rap beat for today. <laughs> Don't take that with you because it's really bad. <laughs> but that conditioning frame for some very hard, hard, hard years. And it wasn't until I realized, girl, you have been saying the same thing to yourself over and over and over again. You have been in repetition telling yourself that things have to be hard, that you're going to have to fight, that you're going to have to push through. And it wasn't until then that I finally shifted things for my good. I imposed it on my journey and my journey became an evolution of all the things I believe. And maybe that's you. Maybe you've been selling yourself the same old sad bars like mine. Hard, hard, hard. Everything is hard. Hard, hard, hard. Every, hey, hey. Maybe you've been rapping that in your head. Maybe your melody is, it'll never happen. It'll never happen. Or it's taking too long. It's taking too long. Or I don't deserve this. Or... I'm not like other girls. I'm not like the Instagram models or I don't have the following. Or I don't have the money. I don't have the looks. I don't have the things. I was born here. Maybe you've been selling yourself those songs, those consequential songs that are really, truly negative bars like mine, right? But and it's time for you to shift that perspective. When I realized it was me, that I was the one that was getting in my way, my first step was like to get out of my way. The first step. Is getting out of my way. I didn't know how to get out of my way, but I knew that I was getting in my way. I knew self-sabotage was what it was happening. I was in a habitual state of self-sabotage. And self-sabotage could even be you sticking with a pattern of decision-making that you know is not serving where you want to go, but it's safe. It could be staying in a position that you've been in for a long time because it's safe or staying in a relationship because it's not as bad as the last one. It could also be staying in a city because everything is familiar. Safe, safe, safe patterns that are not serving your growth zone, right? That's self-sabotage too. I'm not the only great girlfriend under the sound of my voice that has self-sabotaged. I know that I'm in a company of women who have self-sabotaged. So I want to ask you, are you getting in your own way? Are you getting in your own way? You have to stop and think about it. After all, check this out. There's no one telling you to hold on to that story of hurt. There's no one telling you to avoid success. There's no one telling you that you're going to be just like your daddy or just like your mama or that you'll never be successful. I can guarantee you the most harmful saboteurs are not on the outside. They're not at your job walking past your desk saying you're going to fail here. It's not happening. 
you'll never have a passionate career. They're not saying that. They're not, they're not at your job telling you you'll never make six, seven figures, eight figures, whatever you desire. They're not there. They're not in your inbox telling you that you're a failure, right? There's not a rally against you outside. Look out your window. Ain't nobody out there saying, you suck, you suck. That's not happening. But there are conversations that are being held on the inside, those nasty, disgusting, deserving conversations that are telling you that you won't be healthy. They're telling you that the pandemic has forced you into poverty or that unemployment was going to be yours or that everybody in your family got pregnant young. So that's going to just be the way it's got to be. Or, you know, you grew up in a lot in a single family house. Maybe you're not going to be married and maybe that's just the way love is not for you. I don't know, but you know those stories, those nasty, disgusting, disturbing conversations. You know them. And I want you to be honest with what they are. You got to be honest with what they are so that you can disrupt them. That internal chatter is you getting in the way of you and it's sabotaging your journey and your experience. And all of those things are framed around beliefs that you've accepted as true somewhere along the way. It's just an ouch moment. It's like, yo, I really actually grabbed that beat down. And I actually became the predator, right? When you stop and think about it. Yeah, some people can say things and they can do things, but what happens when you turn the knife on you? It's so dangerous. It's just a horrible feeling and it's a horrible realization, right? But you can disrupt it, right? All right, I'm saying that to say, you can disrupt it, right? So for you to disrupt it, I wanna get into it because it's so important. I want you to know that you're not greedy for wanting more out of life. You're not greedy for wanting to be healed. You're not greedy for wanting to have wholeness. You're not greedy for wanting to, to make, you know, earn tons of money or to build a big business. You're not greedy for wanting to have happiness and have a family. You're not greedy for wanting to have it all. You're not greedy for that. When I get more, when you get more, others get more, the world gets more. So it's not being greedy. Us asking for more, wanting healing for our bodies or believing for a passionate husband or passionate marriage or wanting to have children or have great friendships, it's not being greedy. It's not reaching for the stars. It's claiming your birthright. Claiming your birthright. Because you were born with access to all of those things. Now, the sabotage does come along the way and consequences through which you were born, that's different. Those things do happen and they do affect your ability to see what you're worth. But your birthright is wealth. Your birthright is abundance. All of those things are your birthright. And, the, and so the circumstances, you know, will separate you from the thing that you were born into, but it doesn't mean it's not on the inside of you, great girlfriends. That desire, that burning desire, it's you wanting to fulfill your birthright. How dope is that? Like, I just want to be the woman I was born to be. <laughs> I don't want to be less than her. I just want to walk in the fullness of her, Right? So that's the thing that we want to walk into. The capacity on the inside of you is bigger than the circumstances on the outside. But for that capacity to be made evident, to rise up and to actualize how you overcome the circumstances on the outside, those conversations that you have with yourself, they got to be good conversations, great girlfriends. They got to be healthy and they have to be fulfilling. You got to be in there just, sis, you're doing a good job, sis, you're doing a... <laughs> You got to be pumping up the volume. You got to be in there just giving life, right? Those conversations have to be whole. Those internal conversations, they have to be kind. They have to be loving. Those conversations you're having with yourself, they have to be gracious. They have to be affirming. They have to be patient conversations. Why? Because you're fertilizing the soil of your mind. And when you fertilize the soil of your mind, you're cultivating the highest, most evident, fabulous, most beautiful thoughts that give you access to actually walk in your birthright. Remember, you're not being greedy. You're just going after your birthright. And it's set aside for you. It's nestled in there, but you have to clear the lens, declutter those, those nasty conversations, get rid of those ugly, deserving, uh, uh, those gut-wrenching, like, you know, those filthy thoughts that we've been thinking that we've allowed to take root, you gotta uproot that stuff, right? So if you've been impatient with yourself, I understand. I am, I, hey, queen of impatience over here. <laughs> so I work on this daily. So I'm here to tell you, you're not alone. You are in the company of other women who are like, passionately seeking and on a quest to fulfill their birthright, right?
But I want to remind you, you know, that impatience is it's gnawing away and eating away at that kind, gentle soil that you really need to fertilize, right? So you got to be patient with the woman that you have been, be patient with the woman that you are, and patient with the woman that you're becoming in the process. I am patient with the woman that I am. I was. I am patient with the woman that I was. I am patient with the woman that I am. And I am patient with the woman that I'm becoming in the process. So here are three steps to clear your mental lens. Does that work for you? I'd love to know in the reviews and I'd love to know over email when you email me about these episodes. I want to know if that works for you. That Does that affirmation work with you? Work for you, excuse me. So here are three steps to clear your mental lens. Number one, assess the conversations you've been having with yourself and why. What is the root cause of this dialogue that's taking place in your mind, right? Assess the conversations. These are the conversations that I've been having with myself. I've been talking to myself about this. This is what I've been saying. Number one, number two, number three, number four. And here's why I've been saying this. Most of the times those conversations are pressed against a circumstance that you are trying to rupture and have not figured out a solution. And it's causing that you to have those, that combative, that press. It's like a fist fight. Number two, assess how these conversations have affected your ability to believe big and achieve the results you desire. Have you been able to excel as a result of these conversations or do you feel cornered? Sometimes we literally back ourselves into a corner and then we come out into the world being combative and fighting. And you wonder why people say, hey, you got a little edge on your shoulder. Yeah, because I've been at war. I've been in that boxing match, right? Fist fighting with myself over these thoughts. So some conversations corner us and other conversations can open up the world. Like it should open up your world to know that you're not being greedy and that your birthright is, is what you're after. You're in full pursuit of. That should open up the world to you to know that that's what you're in pursuit of, that you're not being greedy, just going after what's yours. But it does close you down to feel like everything in the world is working against you. And it does press you in a corner to think that you always got to fight for what you deserve or that everything's going to be hard, hard, hard. Everything is hard, 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 hard. Those really bad bars that I gave you earlier. All right, number three, (laughs) counter those negative conversations by focusing on the most empowered beautiful parts of who you are. You got to sit with that. There's so many beautiful facets to you as a masterpiece. There's no way we could sit here as God's creation and not be beautiful and not be amazing and not be precious and wonderful in so many ways. We might not always see it, but it doesn't mean it's not true. So it's our responsibility to us, to myself, to my life, to my vessel, to locate the most beautiful, sweet, endearing parts, right? And have whole conversations, kind conversations. I gotta be so passionate about Sybil. You gotta be so passionate about you and so endearing and affectionate to myself that I repel the things that don't match up with that, right? Because I realize like, ooh, that rubs me the wrong way because it it doesn't fit where I'm going and who I am and how I treat myself. It doesn't fit my standards and my values. I've cleared my lens. I have clarity now. I'm in pursuit of my birthright, right? So I'm moving in my entitlement. And with that being said, my values are now to appreciate myself as a vessel and not not, not disrespect her and not tear her down and punish her for not being where I think she should be. Okay, gentle, gentle. You know, with toddlers, I remember when my kids were small and, you know, my son particularly, heavy-handed boy, always has been. <laughs> so he would, he would meet a new baby, specifically Dylan, when she was born. We'd tell him gentle hands, gentle hands, so to teach him how to nurture her so that he wasn't pushing and beating her up on her because he didn't mean any harm, right? Sometimes we don't mean any harm. We just don't know any better. And so when you teach yourself to be gentle and affectionate and, ador- and, and adoring towards yourself, You'll have a certain grace to love yourself when the world is not so kind because those not so kind moments do come. Fast and furious, friend. (laughs) You have to be prepared to fight that and to repel, but do it in the name of love because this vessel, your body, your life deserves that peace and that safe space where love can dwell. All right, I said three steps, but here's number four. This is fourth and final. Be patient in the process of becoming. 
You have to affirm this. So you need to write this down, put this on your wall, make it big in your spirit. I am proud of the woman I was. I am proud of the woman I am. And I am proud of the woman I will become. Likewise, I am patient with the woman that I was. I am patient with the woman that I am. And I am patient with the woman that I'm becoming in the process. Game changer. Bars. Then everything won't be so hard, hard, hard. Everything hard. Won't be any of that anymore. <laughs> It'll be peaceful, tranquil. And when things do get rough, you'll have a safe dwelling space in your vessel and you won't need it from the outside. You'll be able to retreat right here in your own being, right? And you'll be able to trust that where you are is not where you're going to stay because you are in the progressive realization of your dream, of your goals. And you have a clear lens and you know how to get a fresh perspective whenever the world punches you because those punches do happen. I'm, I mean, we all get hit with them, but it's how you respond to it that determines where you're going from there. All right, that's it, great girlfriends. I wanna know if this supports your journey. Email us, welcome at thegreatgirlfriends.com. I wanna see in the comments how you've learned how to clear your lens and get clarity, how you learn how to create the resets that you need, how you've learned how to turn those conversations into a self-love center, right? And be a resource for the fulfillment of your own heart. I wanna know those things. So share it with me. I wanna be able to see those things and hear how we're, how we're journeying together. Last but not least, register for the Power Circle Accelerator starting February 21st and get the mindset, momentum, and accountability that you need for a winning year. All right. I love you, great girlfriends. I'll see you in the Facebook group. Make sure you listen to this week's episode. Looking forward to being with you next week. Peace. Great girlfriends, did you enjoy this week's episode of the podcast? If so, would you please give us your amazing review on iTunes? Every single review helps another great girlfriend get plugged into the podcast, into the community. Speaking of community, make sure you join our Facebook group, The Great Girlfriends. You follow us on Instagram at The Great Girlfriends and on Twitter at the underscore great GFS. Last but not least, we'd like to thank my amazing husband, Kwaku, Sam and Dilly, and all of you for being a part of the global community that makes us so strong. Please remember to share with your friends, keep listening, and keep being a great girlfriend. I'm Sybil Amuti, and I'm out. Peace.